Welcome everybody to this self-care video series. We are again talking with Lalita around uh, Ayurveda and in particular the doshas and this dosha that we're focusing on is Pitta and I am a Pitta Vata body type so it's something that I can introduce this fiery element in me and it was in fact the fire that burnt me out as uh, an architecture student at 19 it was that that actually brought me to Ayurveda and it was in that burnout that I understood that I needed to balance myself in all aspects mm. of my life and I came to love Ayurveda because there was an aspect of it that was very intuitive so I think that this is what we were talking about Lalita and I were talking just before we started filming that there is something in Ayurveda which is no one size fits yeah. all. Let's talk about Pitta in particular yeah. and then also some of the subtleties around how we work with a Pitta personality body type. Yep. Um, yeah, so yeah, I'm also, I just want to say I'm also Vata, Pitta, um, very dominant in those two um, elements or those two aspects or doshas in my body. And Maybe that's why we get along yeah, so well. well yeah. <laughs> um, and um, uh, the Pitta uh, elements where we're looking at fire and water, we need one and the other because otherwise with too much fire, we're going to burn all of our tissues out. So. Uh, pitta is the seat of pitta is in the small intestine um, governs all of our metabolic kind of an enzymatic kind of reactions in the body so our hormones okay so it's so important at different times in our life especially mm. you know the reproductive kind of yes, time in our for life women. yep especially for women um, and um, we're surely looking at um, so the heat in the body the heat coming through the skin, we see that a lot mm. when there's redness in the skin. We also see from the mental perspective and the personality perspective, so when we have a lot of aggression or we've got that fiery, really competitive kind of attitude. Yeah. Um, and so something interesting that I even see within... Something you got to balance. Yeah. You, sorry? you just got to balance it. got to balance it, it. yeah. Yeah. And um, having that even high within myself, I do notice that when I get into those moments where I'm really trying to do the best and be the best and reach the top mm. of the mountain, um, <laughs> just got to sit back into the heart space and be like, wait a second. Heart-centered practices. Yes. Balance you. Yeah. Flowing, gentle practices. So this is a good yeah. thing for us to talk about because it's not that you, um, if you're feeling very fiery, if you're in this perfectionist mode, this is a good one. If you're working really hard, it's all about balance with Ayurveda. You yes. drop into the heart. So what other things, I mean, in terms of pranayama, it might be quite similar to what we were talking about with Vata. With Vata, yep. Well, I wouldn't do things that are too heating. So even Kapalbhati, which is quite a popular kind of um, pranayama, um, I would say it's a little bit, could be too heating for mm -hmm. some people that have too much fire in the body. You could go for something like Sitali, or you could go for Nadi Shodhana as well, or even oh belly, breathing, belly breathing or yogic breathing, uh, because we're going to be working a lot with belly, and then especially this region in the body, I think that movement, gentle movement through mm. here is really great, um, and then also quite calming and cooling to the body. So. Um, Nadi Shodhana, I would say, is of course one of the Maha Pranayamas because it's such a balancing um, pranayama on so so many different so many levels. levels. Yeah, it's wonderful. Um, again, practice. such an integrated. It really shows us how integrated uh, the Ayurvedic and yogic sciences are because by just with pranayama, we're reaching the cellular level, we're reaching mm. the physical level, we're reaching the mental level. So so many levels that we can see even from a scientific perspective or uh, science can have a look at that as well to see what are the benefits so um i mean because when i started to balance myself out when i was really burnt out as this pitta architecture perfectionist every line <laughs> have to be perfect, oh, yeah. have to be perfect student uh part of the uh, recommended it was part of the treatment plan was to do yoga this and this is not a treatment plan that has 
that I would have recognized in my when I went to see my doctor necessarily although they're changing now but it's nice yeah. to know that a treatment plan from Ayurveda could include a mantra it could include uh, an asana then there's tea and herbs and it's this holistic way of viewing things yeah so from that we were talking a bit about a daily routine what kind of yep. apart from the overalls where we should be waking up at a certain time yep. eating when the digestive fire is awake for example what yes. are other things that a pitta could do as a daily routine yep well pittas especially when the fire goes out of balance we can see them uh, lose also their their focus and what they're doing because they're kind of like ex explosive fire so we want to eat the runaway fire um, and then we want to um, we want to do things in moderation so we're coming back to that moderate balance which usually when we're talking about even in the vata um, discussion about what the pitta person looks like they're more um, traditionally medium-sized build quite sharp look you know the thick and the oily quite sturdy body um, we want to help maintain that um, so the fire is not burning them out too much by eating regular me meals throughout the day again eating when the digestive fire is higher traditionally that would probably be when the sun's above us or so the 11 and 12 time to eat our biggest meal so that we're not again eating not eating at that time for that that element when it's the highest in those people as well um, using things like um, well non-spicy foods very important a lot of pitas can like the spicy because it helps fuel their fire yes people like the things that aren't necessarily good for them the pitas love yes. like a fiery yoga practice in ashtanga yes it was always uh, filled with lawyers and architects there were these yes. fiery people go and do a fire practice and it's yes. like the kafas all love the yin practice they just want to yeah. lie around yeah. but they need the opposite right yes. so it's interesting that the pitas will love spicy food chili those types of things but yes. it's not necessarily the best for them yes i would say going with something a little more cooling so even the fennel is quite balancing and cooling yeah. um, cardamom as well can be quite balancing and cooling and um, in the morning you can have that kind of tea um, again tulsi that I would say is all around, all rounder um, tea for somebody with a higher fire, um, and then um, uh, in terms of the yogic and the sorry the yogic like specific asanas, I would go for you know doing any kind of twists in this area, Wonderful. and like we said the the heart opening heart the forward opening. bends mm. um, and the backward bends are great as well. Wow. So. Great. So Practicing hard opening that. practices, twisting is all helping to balance Pitta. And how do you think Pitta will manifest in this time? Or how are you seeing it manifest yep. right now? Yeah, well, in terms of the immunity, um, I would say that we're going to see more of the heat coming through in terms of a, a lot of time it can be allergic response um, in the body. And so we're seeing potentially more rashes. We're going to see um, even um, the body heat going up. Um, so that's oh, like yeah, related temperatures, to temperatures changing. And yeah. Okay, yeah. So we're looking at those kind of things within, you know, Pitta and then immunity. But again, we have to look at coming back to how do we maintain our body in balance. So the Pitta body type or cooling that, that fire. And then. Um, probably also other things that we're going to see coming up are going to be um, uh, more of the like the mental aspects of yes. anger and frustration, frustration um, irritability. irritability, more like uh, like aversion towards things, and then that's going to go into that um, you know can go into that fear-based kind of uh, mentality, which okay. leads to the anxiety and everything around it. So it's like staying within the calming. It's you know calming the mind yeah not dropping into anger and yeah can do that in many ways we can do that through meditation practices and yogic practices but also yes. the, the ayurvedic system demonstrates we can do it through diet and holistic yep. living yep okay perfect yeah Amazing. thank you thank Balita, you and thank you all for listening and we will uh, be back with one more in this series on the doshic treatment and ayurveda